Hi, I'm Tim Bonney, lead pastor at First United Methodist Church in Indianola. We're gathering today for our Monday morning devotion. Today I'm sharing from a book by Bishop Reuben Job, Listen, Praying in a Noisy World. Let's begin this devotional time with a prayer that's found in this book about God's unconditional love. Holy God, God of unconditional love and unlimited presence, I come to make myself fully available to you, your will, and your way. Speak to me gently and clearly, for I am yours, and desire to hear, understand, and be obedient to your slightest whisper. Speak, for I am listening. From Mark's Gospel, the first chapter, beginning at the ninth verse. About that time, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and John baptized him in the Jordan River. While he was coming up out of the water, Jesus saw heaven splitting open and the Spirit, like a dove, coming down on him. And there was a voice from heaven, You are my Son, whom I dearly love. In you I find happiness. At once the Spirit forced Jesus out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan. He was among the wild animals, and the angels took care of him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. While we may still very much be in a busy world, uh, when Bishop Job wrote this book back in 2015, uh, he could not have imagined the situation we're in now, where while we are still busy, we find ourselves busy, uh, stuck in our own homes, uh, isolated in our offices and uh, in in our uh, kitchens and living rooms and bedrooms. Uh, some of us uh, isolated with friends, others of us isolated by ourselves. And uh, just as much as when there's too much noise in the world, it makes it hard to listen for God. When it's too quiet, or when we don't have a sense of normalcy, it's also really hard to listen and hear God. Uh, particularly during a time in our nation uh, when there's a lot of illness and uh, the news is every day, every day about COVID-19, about the pandemic, it's hard to remember how much God loves us. Every once in a while, somebody will say something like, uh, why did God bring this on us? Or, or what did we do uh, that God would punish us with an illness? Or, uh, or the opposite, some people have said things like, well, because I'm a Christian, I can't get sick. What these people are failing to understand is that illness and things that happen in the world, uh, viruses, um, accidents, these are not caused by God. Uh, they are part of the human life that we have. They're part of the world as it is. And God walks with us through dark times, but does, God does not cause the darkness. The scripture says that God is love, and in God there is no darkness. And that uh, if anyone hates a sister or brother and says they love God, they're a liar. And the truth is not in them, because God is love. So we're in this world situation and we are hearing the news constantly being bombarded with all this information. It's easy to lose track of our spiritual life. When Jesus was baptized by John in the Jordan, he was not baptized as a repentance of sin. Uh, he was baptized to mark the beginning of his ministry and also as, as an example to us. Jesus was led in the wilderness for 40 days and was tempted, but did not sin. One of the things that came out of that passage of Scripture is that at, um, at Jesus' baptism, as he came up out of the water, um, there was a voice from heaven in the Markan translation or Markan version of the story saying, This is my beloved son. Listen to him. We hear similar words again at the transfiguration of Jesus when he is on the mountain with Peter, James, and John. And Peter kind of 
becomes overcome with excitement and and uh, starts talking about building uh, some some uh, places so they can just stay up there on the mountain and God again interrupts and says this is my son listen to him one of the most important things in prayer and meditation is listening there are a lot of devotions written uh, where we say words, where we say prayers, uh, where we share liturgy, maybe if we're worshiping with somebody else, where we have responsive litanies, where we're talking. But one of the things we sometimes really fail to do is to listen. To listen for that still small voice of God that tells us how much God really loves us. I've come to believe above all else that the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ is God's boundless, reckless, gracious love. As a Methodist Christian, grace is one of the most important theological concepts in, in my understanding of the faith. God has always loved us through His grace that unmerited favor. God has always been there for us, reaching out to us, seeking to, to woo us and bring us in. And in our lives as Christians, God is always working through God's grace to make us more loving. The call of the gospel is to share the love of Jesus Christ with other people, to let them know that God sent God's Son into the world so that they would know God's love. We're in a world where we deeply now need to feel a sense of God's presence and God's love. And the truth is that God is always present. When we begin our, uh, our prayer on Sunday morning, we call it an opening prayer and not an invocation. Invocation means to ask God to show up, to invoke. God's already here. God's here with me in this office this morning as I share. God is here with us in our homes. God is here with us with our families. God is with us and present with us in our loneliness. We always have God in our lives. And so to know, as it says in this, this beautiful little prayer, I come to make myself fully available, speak for I'm listening, to know that we can ask God to listen, and to know that God has told us to listen. It's the first step in knowing God better. I hope that during these times of isolation, you will take time for prayer. If you've not had a regular devotion as part of your life, I hope that you would find a few minutes each day, it could be any time of the day, to say some prayers, to share, to talk to God, to read some scripture, maybe to read some devotional literature, or if you don't have any at home to get online, uh, go to the Upper Room uh, or, or one of the other sites that has devotional literature and, and share and, and read and feel and sense God's presence. Know that whether you feel it or not right now, God is here with you, God is always with you, and God loves you.